At the age of 18, I became pregnant. I was scared, confused. I didn't want to tell my parents. I was brought up Catholic, so um, I felt like I had disappointed them. So uh, instead of going to my parents, I went to a uh, local Planned Parenthood that was just a little bit outside of our town. I was 19 years old. full of um, insecurities. Um, low self-esteem. For, for me, the appreciation that I have for myself, it was nothing. When I was uh, in my early 20s in graduate school, I had a long-term relationship and found myself pregnant. And I was not uh, Christian. I didn't consider myself Christian or Catholic, very far away from anything like that. Um, I was a pretty angry, sort of troubled woman. I'd had a pretty rocky upbringing. Uh, my mom had committed suicide. Shortly after I went into depression, um, I started using drugs and alcohol. And through a period of time, um, I would get pregnant two more times and I would have uh, two more abortions. It wasn't until I really contemplated suicide and I knew if I didn't seek help that, you know, that would be it. I didn't really have any emotional connection to my pregnancy, uh, probably because I had lost my mom at such a young age. So I just was, did not feel that maternal, that maternal tie. Something inside of me, I wasn't the same. I was not the same. All I wanted is to have my child back. Women who have uh, abortions, are, um, it's a complicated grief. Um, many of them uh, have symptoms of depression, anxiety, some problems in relationships. Um, there's an empty, emptiness about them. Humans have an amazing ability too to put things, you know, in the background, push it down, don't talk about it, and continue on with their lives. And when we do that, um, then there's other things that pop up in our lives and problems and issues. Sooner or later, sometimes, they start realizing that something is not right, and that's when they seek help. You know, it takes a lot of courage to even make that first phone call. Project Rachel was founded in 1984, and it's an outreach of the Catholic Church that helps anyone who's been affected by abortion, whether that's mothers or fathers, grandparents or siblings. I think ultimately what Project Rachel hopes to achieve is to be a door that begins the process and walks with particularly a woman through the process of post-abortive healing in a number of ways. It really is a program that seeks to meet the needs of the individual person. And that means there's a commitment through Project Rachel of ongoing work. In other words, that that initial contact, those initial programs, whether it is going to a weekend uh, program or a day of recollection or retreat, that that's really just the beginning and launching point uh, to a real journey that the church is taking with that person, that woman, to healing in Christ. People feel the remorse and regret and the guilt behind abortion at different times. Sometimes it's right after, sometimes it's when they're young, sometimes it's when they're old. It takes a real courage and a strength for a woman to come in and, and admit to someone that they um, have committed this sin in the past or that they have, they have the secret that they're hiding and that they're holding. For me, it's, it's a powerful moment of uh, walking with someone, accompanying them even and bringing the mercy and the goodness of God uh, into a situation that, uh, and, and into a moment, a, a past, an experience um, that's been so difficult and so trying for them. It took me almost 30 years, what, 29 years, to figure out 
or to understand what was going on with me. I knew then that there is no sin that God cannot forgive. I had my first confession and I was terrified. When I went in, I put my head down and I wouldn't look at him and I told him, Father, I had an abortion. And he asked me to look up at him and he was crying. And he told me that he was not only crying for the loss of my little one, but he was crying for me as well. I just saw Jesus' face. It j just Jesus' face was right there, his hands, his healing touch, his words. And I just knew in an instant that I'd found, you know, my true home. So it was just a wonderful, a wonderful, it was just a wonderful, amazing thing. This is a time God is giving them the opportunity to share their burden, either in the form of sharing that with a friend or with a priest in a kind of pastoral counseling, or especially, I think in the most powerful way, when women who have had an abortion come to seek the mercy of God, the forgiveness, and the freedom that comes in the sacrament of penance. It's a real blessing to work with women who reach out for help. Yeah. We're there just to listen and to walk with them through their healing journey. God does amazing things. When someone's open to His grace, there's definitely a transformation that happens. Don't be afraid. You'll just find love and healing, tremendous healing. And it's, it's the beginning of a wonderful journey from darkness into the light and into healing. God is loving and merciful. He assures us that there is no sin greater than His mercy. And what we have to do is to acknowledge our need to be forgiven, uh, to resolve uh, our lives, to do what God is asking of us, and then simply to embrace, to celebrate the precious gift of mercy, forgiveness, that will allow us to begin anew. Not because we deserve it, not because we earned it, but because we have a loving and a generous God who never ever gives up on us, and so we must never give up on ourselves.